at the time of making this video i just felt an earthquake so i hope people in new jersey new york pennsylvania maryland and the surrounding areas are also fine so if you're joining from these surrounding areas just tap in the comments and let me know say all are uno fine you see me more if everybody all right because there was an earthquake just a while ago in the in the united states yeah go on you tell go on go on ease yourself just keep it calm you tell star only put pressure on my gun What time me talk for carry on You don't need no girl for turn to no man for talk to Feelings hurt when the journey so far Wag1 success family, hope you all doing alright If you're new to the channel, welcome and make sure to subscribe to get all our latest videos Like this video so we can continue to drop more contents like this one So in the BBC, one extra interview with Sean B. Massacre gave us One of his best interviews to date and this one will go down in history I love everything about this interview Massacre speak about his musical influences, career development, personal beliefs and future aspiration So Massacre acknowledges musical icons such as Bone to Killer, Vibes Cartel, Sizzler Capleton and Eminem as his inspiration. Massacre highlight Eminem's diversity and storytelling as particularly impactful on his artistic approach when making music in dancehall. Who was your artist when you was growing up? Because we all had an artist. When we was Where are some man? Definitely Bounty Killer, Vibes Cartel, um, Sizzler, Capleton. Yeah, we used to love the um, Eminem. Eminem was my favorite rapper. I love lyrics, you know what I mean? So, I used to like how diverse it is and how we music them just have a, have a storyline to it. Just the body, just everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. All right, so finally we get Massacre to talk about Idonia more extensively. So, Massacre talk about his reconciliation with Idonia. Massacre said that move was necessary because unity in dancehall community is needed. Massacre also hints at a future collaboration with Idonia. I know that if this happened, it will create history in dancehall so massacre is showing other artists how to properly give respect and the importance of mutual respect in the music business one story that we all saw and i think we all loved is when we saw you and idonia yeah man together yeah man big up idonia you know what i mean unity is is needed in the dancehall you get what i say bad dj bad bad dj you get what i say yeah man and he's an artist from a group and 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 see like vibes cartel do it mm. and their high school and want do it like how them do it you know what i mean so straight up could we ever see a day a massacre and i don't have on one title yes man yes man yes man and possibly not the near future you know what i mean yeah man yeah you know man. they're gonna run with that in my vlogs bro yeah man <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Massacre said working with producer like Donwell and TJ played a pivotal role in his development and growth in the music business because people like TJ motivated him early on in his career and the support from these industry figures who saw his potential for greatness gave him words of encouragement and Massacre recall a moment when TJ called him and tell him that Vibes Cartel is running the place right now but in couple years he will be one of the biggest thing in dancehall and a force to be reckoned with are there any producers that you you've kind of taken a fancy to working with over the years because their sound works for you and you you know that every time you go back you you you, you, you get that hit record yeah man done well big up done well you know what i mean big up mozico two of the youths when we work with um for numerous amount of years and build a relationship with talented youths them you know what i mean and that are the same thing them love the music them dedicated and disciplined so them are two of the youths when I work with them, I always find it's with TJ Records. I was, I was waiting for you to yeah, say man, TJ. Yeah, man, TJ, I'm a brother like that. TJ, I'm one of the first person them really try to reach out and help me, help me in the music. You know what I mean? Different from my friend Kaba, you know what I mean? You know Kaba. Mm. But TJ was, was that person that when we just up and I come up, I'm find God and done, you know what I mean? He must send me rid him. I remember say, TJ was a hot producer at them time. There. You know what I mean? He still motivate me. I say, yo, the thing with TJ, you know, and I don't know, I may tell you the truth, it's like the man a prophet. One day I there at the studio in a real life and he called me and he said, DJ, listen to me. A vibes cartel I run the thing now. I never forget that, but the man I said, Yeah, what's going on? Yes, after a couple of years, you're going to be the biggest artist in a dance hall and it, no, nobody else. And I can't understand where I can't understand where I say at that point in time. And he said, Listen to me, I listen to music a long time. But then I meet Dan Carleone and he tell me the same thing, because I'm Dan Carleone from here, 19. And the man I said, Listen to me, bro. 
Yeah, man, ask Razi, man. Dan Carlin is short when me about 18, 19, man. As youth, that's what kept me motivated. Alright, so we know Vibes Cartel have crazy worth ethic, but Masika let us know that his worth ethic is, is a critical part to his success. Masika described his discipline routine for daily production from his home studio. If other musicians do not have the same seriousness similar to how him approach his career, then you can't come chill around him because I work him, I work on a chicken, him a jerk. And because of this dedication, he has been able to significantly change his family life. Tell me about the work ethic. Every day. I actually have a student at, at the back of my yard. Can we, can we take a look at walking there? Yes, and man, up. definitely. My voice, the whole generation of kings in the studio. My voice, the whole 4 3 8 in the studio at the back of my house. I just wake up and go in at the back of my yard. Professional, professional studio. I do music every day. I think about music every day. This is my job. So I don't me not do it like, yo, I could go to the studio, go vibe. I make, no, I do this seven days of the week. So I have my weekends and my mother's no say you're right, but at twenty four seven every day I do music, you know what I mean? Because here what? you see my thing is this is how me do my music. You can't just pull up on me and with us vibing at the studio. You can't do that with a pilot. You can't do that with an accountant at the bank. Do not take my job for a joke. You know what I mean? You can't come vibing at the, it's not a play play place. <laughs> I work, go on in and so when I turn on my rhythm, this is how I make my bread and butter. This is what changed my family life. Alright, so Masika touched on early criticism about his lack of versatility and Masika admits the accuracy of these criticism early on in his career and he, he also credit this feedback with motivating him to diversify his music and refine his songwriting skills and the process of making music leading to a series of hit songs that we come to know and love today. Yes. That people used to critique you about yes. Yes. It just has spit bars, it just has spit bars, no me melodies. Yeah, man. Do you kind of look back at it and say, they, they were right? 100% they were right, you know what I mean? And, and that is why I could have been able to grow and, and mature and, and find so much hit songs, you know what I mean? Till it come like me not even can put out a song without it being, you know what I mean? So it was the songs they never construct properly, you know what I mean? We did just have a lot of lyrics and just a spit, but then... You know, we get con constructive criticism. We go back to the giant board, as I say. We start look on the songs and we are work. We start listening to different type of music, like like really going deep. You now, me that listen for just fun, but now we start going, build my own chemistry, see how stuff work. So a pivotal moment in his career was the creation of They Don't Know, that big, 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 big hit song that everybody love and you know I, I love also a song that marked his departure from his usual style of doing music and despite not liking the song at first the song's simplicity and emotional depth resonated with people like myself you know show how unpredictable music can be and show the in the importance of authenticity in music I think I know where your turning point was in your career when it comes to lyrics and melodies I'm gonna see if you agree with agree with me yeah, man, really. where, where do you think it was what song do you think marked that change where you thought see it there that's what they um, I would have said they don't know 2018 yeah man 100% they don't know you know what's surprising about that song Shani B is actually a party song I did like a record on the rhythm <laughs> seriously yeah man when I heard the rhythm first I actually was going to do a party song and you know just hearing the rhythm hearing the rhythm I say yo I try something different. And my voice is sung. When my voice is sung, to be honest, it wasn't my favorite song. Because, no, naturally I'm a lyricist, so I'm like, eh, you know the thing already. And the, the similes and the metaphor, them and everything of your, of your rhyme. But then, when I start listening now, there was just this addiction to the song, the simplicity of the song. And Alright, so Masika touches on the subject of depression in dancehall music among the youths. He said it's a lack of self-belief and the detrimental effects of social media. So the genocide boss said self-acceptance and resilience is important because the current generation of youths are too weak. Just like what Chronicle has said. The youths them weak and a recent them start notice. We feel like you now the youths them weaker than before, you know what I mean? I'm just be really like... The youths them complain about everything, you know, the youths them entitled, you know what I mean? The youths them thin skin, so you're not even can correct youths without him feeling some type of way. You can hardly speak your mind, everybody just sensitive, you know what I mean? And I think that helped lead with, with, with the depression, because most of the time you ask them what them depression, depressed about, they can't even tell you. Sometimes a materialistic things are just personal gains, you know what I mean? And things where, if you really look at it, you don't have to be depressed, you get what I say? 